My hardcore world is pretty good and I've done some amazing stuff in it, but my main area is lacking and really messy. So today I'm going to transform it into a thriving village with all the essentials I'm going to need in my world. But before we can do that, there needs to be some destruction. And the first thing that needs to go is this carrot and potato farm. This thing just doesn't work. The villagers just keep disappearing. So let's just blow it up. Hopefully this doesn't destroy anything else around this area. Well, I'd say that did a pretty good job. And then I cleaned up the area because the TNT blew up a tiny bit too much. But now I need to confess something. And that is that I don't really like this house. First of all, the tower is weird in the middle there. I don't know why I did it like that. The main problem though is the palette because I don't really like it and I do not want to build an entire town using it. And that is why I'm going to destroy this house and make a new one. So now let's destroy this house. But before I could blow my house up, I had to evacuate all of my animals and precious items. But now that I've got everything out of that house that I need to, it's time to light it up. And well, that is very blown up. Pushing past the mental anguish of destroying the house I've had since episode one, I cleaned up all of the mess to prepare for my new town. But now that this entire area is cleared out, the next step to building the town is collecting all of the materials. And the main materials I'm going to need to build this town is birch, dark oak, spruce, and stone. For the stone, I've got my AFKable stone farm I made a few videos ago, which I can just AFK at to get all the stone I need. And then for all three of the wood types, I should have saplings for them in my chest monster. And somehow in this entire chest monster, I don't have a single sapling that I need. So I set off flying all over my world to collect all of the wood I'm going to need to build my town. go. I've now got all of the materials I'm going to need to start building this town. And the first building I want to build is going to be my new house, which don't worry is very similar to my original one. So let's build it. You can definitely see the similarities between this house and my old one, but I also think that it just looks so much better. Just looking at the sides, you can see there's definitely a lot more detail than there was in my other house I had before. And I've also done this nice pathway, which I've decorated with some path blocks, coarse dirt, and also some buttons and flowers. And I've also done the interior. So far, I haven't done anything really down here. But if you go up the ladder, I've got two double beds, which pretty much take up the whole space, except they are very comfortable. But now that my house is done, let's move on to the second building, and that is going to be a storage room. But first, I want to figure out where to put it. I was thinking if I move this path around and do some terraforming here, I could put it right here, sort of close to my house over here, while still giving me some room to do some decorating. And now that I've built the terrain my storage house is going on, I want to make an outline for it so that I can make sure it's going to fit in this area. Yeah, I think this could work. But before I could start building the storage house, my dog Rocket came in and tried to play Minecraft. Okay, stop. What are you doing? You can't, you're not, your name isn't Max. You can't play Minecraft. Excuse you. Excuse you. But cute dogs aside, let's start building the storage house. And there is the storage room. 
Here I designed it so that you fly in rather than walking in a door like my house over there. But inside here there are plenty of chests. So here I have got four layers done but the idea is that I'm going to go down and down until I reach bedrock. Or as far down as I need to go to fit everything that I need. But you'll probably notice there's a big hole here and the reason for that is because I want to put a diamond block there. Except I'm pretty poor. So let's go on a quick mining trip. This isn't diamonds. This isn't diamonds. That's not diamonds. Oh, this isn't diamonds, but it is an iron vein. Oh, this is awesome. Holy cow, this thing just doesn't stop. I'm gonna stop mining the iron vein for now, but I'm definitely gonna save the coordinates of it. You might be wondering why I was so excited about that, and that is because my iron farm actually broke, so I've been really low on iron recently. But now I'll continue my search for diamonds. Oh, finally. But it was literally only two. But if I get lucky and get three from both of them, then it'll still be enough. Oh, what? It gave me four each. Holy cow. But now that the storage house is done, I'm going to connect these two up with a nice pathway. And just like that, the path is now going from my house to the storage house. Except there is quite a bit of a gap in the middle. So I do want to add some nature to fill in the space. And while I'm adding in all this nature, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed because I put a ton of effort into all of these videos. But now that the nature over here is complete, let's move on to the next building. And that is going to be a barn because I don't want to keep my animals in this little pen forever. And I want them to have their own little section in the barn. And I think the best spot to build it is going to be here with the front on this side because then we can have this path extending and going around the storage house to continue my town all the way down here in the future. So without further ado, let's start building the barn. And here is my barn. As you can see, I've connected the path from my main area to the barn and it just goes inside. And I've also got a bit coming to the side for me to expand my town in the future. And of course, in here I've got all of my pets, such as Fred the donkey and an unnamed llama, skeleton horse and regular horse. So, if you have any name suggestions for them, then make sure you comment them down below for a chance to get a shout out in the next episode if I do choose your name suggestion. But now that I'm done with the barn, let's move on to the next building and that is going to be an auto smelter slash brewery house. But this new building is going to require a bunch of deep slate to build it. So I set off and flew into a cave to collect up all the deep slate I would need. And now that I'd collected all of the deep slate that I would need, I began building the auto smelter slash potion house. But now that I'd built the main structure of the house, I began adding all of the finer details, which are what really make or break a building. And there it is. Overall, it is very different to the rest of the town, but I do think it is my favorite, not just because of the deep slate, but I also think I did the best job on the roof with this one. I made the entrance face this way because personally, I like this side and think that it looks a lot better and I wanted it to be facing the main area that I'd built so far. But it's not going to be excluded because I am going to expand the rest of the town down this way which will connect it up all nicely. Even though the outside of the building was looking amazing, I hadn't done the inside yet so I set off building the potion room on the top floor 
and the automatic smelter down below. And there we go. Here you can see I have decorated the potion room with a few of these nether wart farms, a little water trough here, some barrels all around, and also some cauldrons and brewing stand. Except the main thing I like about it is these hanging bits of water, which are definitely not floating at all. And down here in the auto smelter, I didn't really decorate it too much because building it was enough trouble as it was because I did not follow a tutorial for it. But now that the auto smelter slash potion house is complete, I want to add a few small buildings into this area because at the moment it is pretty empty. So I begin by building another house right next to my one and I'll tell you the purpose for it in just a minute. And then I tried building a fountain in the middle of the area I had built so far with a person on the top. But it failed miserably, so I went for a more traditional fountain instead. And then I finished off my building spree by constructing a mining hut which will have an entire video to itself. And with that, I think that this area is complete. But I have done quite a bit off camera, so I'll show you all of that. First off, I've added a few wagons outside the barn and the mystery house. And I've also made a peony garden here between the mystery house and my house just to fill in the space. And in between the mining house and the mystery house, I've decided to add another building which is diagonal. And you might be wondering why I didn't show you guys the time lapse footage of it. And that is because it took me a few hours. I did not plan this prior to building it. And I've never built anything diagonally before. So it took me quite a long time and I don't think you guys would want to see me suffer. Because you don't want to see me suffer, right? This mystery house is meant to be a dog house, hence the bones in the wagon. But I decided to give it to Fred because I didn't want him inside of the barn with all of the other low life animals. Seeing as he is a king and he should at least have his own house. But this is not the end of the town because each video I'm going to try and add a fountain house or garden so that we can slowly expand it and that is going to do us for today so if you enjoyed the video and want to see my town slowly spread then make sure you like and subscribe and it also means a ton and with that i'll see you next time bye